majority of my stuff moves on Wednesday. She's packing up her stuff. But basically all the, the bigger furniture was mine. The dining room table. I'm in a 2016 Altima and it's here for front and rear brakes. It's getting pads and rotors. And uh, I know how it goes with these Altimas already. You know, the, the squealing noise, even though everything is brand new and there's absolutely nothing wrong. So I made sure to let the owner know, hey, there may be a squeal by the time I'm done. It's just the way it is. I don't know what causes it, whatever, right? Um, so I'm trying different things, okay? Normally, I have a set of pads that I normally order from like Rock Auto and I've tried various brands and they all tend to squeal, even from like O'Reilly's, at uh, Advance Auto, AutoZone, whatever, right? So for this car, I wanted to try some uh, Akebono. I, I think that's I think that's how it's pronounced, Ak Akebono. Uh, so I wanted to try some of those pads for it and it's what I ordered, okay? So, so far I've only done the front brakes Took it out for a test drive, and there's absolutely no squealing. Is it because I'm using those Akabono pads, or was this car just not going to squeal? It's just hard. It's hard to tell. Um, but so far, it's uh, sounding good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rear brakes, and same same set of pads are gonna go on the rear. Hopefully, there's no squeals by the time I'm done. If this car is nice and quiet when it brakes, uh, for now on, when I get these Altimas or Maximas. I'm going to keep using the same exact pads and we'll see if the uh, squealing goes away. I'm about to do the rear brakes on this 16 Altima. Look how the rear end is slammed compared to the front. It's like that on both sides. Both of these uh, shocks are blown out. It's crazy. car's not even that old. I hate when I see stuff like this. This right here is what destroys these brake lines. Retains all the water. Drop away. And say I didn't try. There you go, like new again. Gasket, oh, but fluffy. All right, so that's it. No more second guessing myself. Coolant does not shoot up like that every time you hit the accelerator pedal, especially when the engine is cold. Um, it's a head gasket. That's it. Like I said, putting her in the tires, parking it back on the street, and uh, she could get a refund for her labor that she paid for. And that's it. I'm not messing. I'm not messing with this turd. That's it. I put some air in the tires. They are both filled now. The other side's actually okay. Now I can get this piece of crap out of here and pull in my beautiful CRX. <laughs> we have a 2014 Chevy Impala here. And I only dropped it off because he has a, a concern of intermittent no crank. He said whenever the heck it wants to, it turns into just a click, a solid click when he turns the key. And the car won't start, obviously. And then he said he uh, he waits a little while, tries it again, car starts right up. All right, so after starting it for about 10 times, it finally acted up on me. I got to a point where it would just click. And then I pretty much lost all power at the dash right here. Um, and now it is starting again. Oh, there it goes again. And look, oh, best thing, catching it in action. You saw it happen. Turn the key, nothing, absolutely no power here, and we heard a click up front. So let's go up front and let's uh, let's have a look at what I noticed. Okay, so coming up front here, what I wanted to do first was get to the starter relay. Okay, so by the way, it's this one right here. Now I want to remove this plastic cover that normally sits right there. 
and I could not get the cover off. So I had to resort to removing the little nut that sits here so I could remove the whole assembly. Uh, let's see if I can show you. Just like that and lift it up to get it out of there and I was able to get the cover off. So I thought something's not right here because that cover should be able to come off. And I noticed the battery is wedged right up against uh, this fuse box, right? So you start looking at the battery. Why isn't it sitting correctly in its tray? And you clearly notice right here that it is hitting. Basically what's going on here is someone installed a battery that does not belong on this car, okay? So we know this is the wrong battery, right? The next step is we lost power to the dash up there. So all I did was grab the positive terminal. I go to move it. Look how loose that is. Oh, you heard that? We just got power back. Look at the ground side. Same thing on the ground side. Let's go inside. We just heard the throttle body uh, actuate. So let's go back inside. And I bet you this car will now start. Oh, not yet. Let's go mess with that battery some more. <laughs> it's making a liar out of me. There we go. Okay. You can see we got our power power back and it should start. No. <laughs> All right, third, third time to charm. The battery just isn't making good connection. And there we go again. Yeah, everything's super loose. It's hard to get a good connection. Now, hopefully the car will start. There it goes. So, what's going on here is someone installed a battery that doesn't fit. Well, it's not only the battery. Uh, the terminals, uh, sure, they're just loose. Really, that's what, what's causing this. But I'm going to suggest that he gets a correct battery, even though that one's fine. So, I'm going to go ahead and tighten up those terminals and make sure they are nice and solid how they should be. But also recommend that he gets the correct battery that belongs in this car because that one uh, clearly does not fit. I disconnected the terminals off the battery. I cleaned everything. I put it back together and it's nice and tight now. I've started the car about a dozen times and now I cannot get it to uh, have that same problem. So I'm going to have to go ahead and call this one fixed. It was loose battery terminals. It's super easy for someone to misdiagnose that, clip that clicking sound when you initially turn the key and try to throw a starter at this car and it would just be a bunch of wasted money so uh, that's it for this one I have something else to look at on this car uh, the other complaint is uh, they said no heat at all first thing I notice is we have no blower motor action so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle that little job see what's going on with it alright so I decided to not leave you guys hanging out a hole uh, blower motor issue as you can see I got my test light here and I got it running to a ground underneath the dash and, uh, I checked for power I do have the blower motor on high speed I checked for power right at the connector for the blower motor we're not getting anything so I disconnected the harness going to the blower motor resistor and as soon as I pulled it out the first thing I noticed is womp right there melted connector but you take out my mirror right here and let's look at those pins and boom you can see that they are melted in there as well we are back with this Chevy Malibu and it's the one that the, the wiper stopped working so I went to AutoZone and picked up some of those uh, little dormant caps that go uh, into the wiper linkage and it's been like a month or two and to no one's surprise they failed okay so we're gonna this time we're going to replace the whole wiper unit assembly with a brand new one from the dealer so this is actually gonna last uh you know no no more of that dormant crap anyone else who remembers <laughs> i couldn't get these arms off last time so i had to like pry this up and use a block of wood so i can work right here right to get that stuff done well, I got a new tool. Boom. I put this on the wiper arms. Knocked them off instantly. 
It's like, bam! Okay? Having the right tool for the job. Jesus Christ makes so much of a difference. Instantly, I did not waste any time. I must have wasted 15 minutes before last time I was here. 15, 20 minutes trying to get these things off. And it defeated me. And right tool for the right job. All right, so I got this separated and just kind of move it back. It's still attached via the uh, the line for the uh, windshield fluid, so try not to move it too much. But here goes the one that broke last time, and once again, it's broken. These are the Dorman bushings right here and right here. So this whole wiper assembly is going to get replaced. We're going to reuse the same motor because it still works. And there we go. It went in super easy. It's amazing how OEM parts fit, right? I'm just going to go ahead and test it out before I put everything back together. Just turn it on, make sure everything moves freely. But I'd say that's uh, just about it for this Malibu. She uh, should not have this problem anymore. I put my hand right there on that, uh, that gate or fence. I'm not really sure what it's officially called. <laughs> but... Yep, that's right, people. It's bird shit. Everyone's car I get in has some sort of gloves, mask, uh, disinfectants. Just gonna start to be the norm around here. Here we have a 2015 Mazda 6, and it's here for a noise complaint coming from up front. Uh, she said it was at the dealer. They replaced a front left floor control arm, and that I can see. And then it went to a different shop. And they did front pads and rotors, and that I can see also. <sighs> but, uh, so initially she was having a clicking or clunking noise up front, right? And they told her that it's the slide pins. Okay, they, the dealer told her that the slide pins are worn out. And either uh, the slide pins need to get replaced, or they need to replace the whole caliper assembly. Here's one thing, I know slide pins can wear out and I haven't been working on cars in the grand scheme of things as long as other people have. But in all the time that I have been working on cars, I've never ever had to replace slide pins because they're worn out. You know, that I've just never seen or heard of that, okay? Yet the dealer is telling her that they're worn out and we gotta replace your caliper assembly. So anyway, she took it to a different shop and they replaced the slide pins now the guy who did it told her there was nothing wrong with your old ones but i replaced them anyway because it's what you wanted us to do so fine so she showed me the bag of the old slide pins they look perfectly fine to me now when i looked at the brakes with the wheel still on the car the first thing i noticed let's see i know there's so much glare out here let's see if we can get this to focus no you're not going to see that but basically, oh crap, there is a big gap between the caliper bracket and this brake pad. Same thing down here. It's hard to see because whoever was in here just slopped it up with grease. But look at this. You guys see this? Up and down. Same thing for the rear pad. Up and down okay so all this crap are going back and forth and saying it's the slide pins and the caliper and blah 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 we got brake pads that I believe don't belong on this car they're just not right they're not the right size brake pads should not do that and another sign that these are not the correct brake pads is look at the new rotor look at the rust that's starting to develop uh, specifically right here on the edge okay that brake pad should be making full contact all the way to the edge but it's not that's why it's got rust developing right here because it's not making full contact and you can see how the pad is just slightly shorter than the rotor so what I'm gonna recommend is that she goes to the dealer give them the VIN number and get the correct brake pad for this car <laughs> Uh, I hate when I say VIN number because uh, VIN within itself stands for Vehicle Identification Number. 
Okay, so you're saying vehicle identification number, number. <laughs> it's like saying FedEx Express. Well, FedEx stands for Federal Express. So you're saying Federal Express Express. It's so stupid. <laughs> now, one thing I noticed is one of the lug nuts are different. Okay? All of these are 21 millimeters and this is the only one that's 19. And it came off of here and then I look in here closely and that stud is already all mangled up. Like it's been, it's like cone shaped, okay? So the rest of them are wide and, and flat. And this is like, a, like someone's ground off the edge. I don't know what, I have no idea what's going on here, but I hate to see things like this. To me, this car is still, technically I consider it a new car. 60,000 miles, that's nothing. And it looks like it's in great condition. You know, and then you see crap like this, it's just, someone was in here acting a fool and just just hacking shit up ah, whatever and it's just bothered there's so much grease on these brake pads i know you guys can't see them because of the, the sun there's just so much grease just packed everywhere around those brake pads it's freaking crazy okay so it is a few days later with this mazda and the owner actually went to the dealer and got some oem pads just like i suggested so in the front here we have a brand new pad from the dealer and there's absolutely no movement up and down and if we go to the old pad you can even hear it and the pad from the dealer absolutely nothing and before i go here one more thing i noticed is look how the pad is sitting much closer to the edge of the rotor so it's going to get rid of this rust line right here where the pad was not making contact with the rotor so it's another thing I noticed. Yeah, it's crazy the difference between uh, aftermarket and OEM parts. All right, guys, we've got a 2003 Hyundai Sonata here for rear brakes. Look at this! Isn't that crazy? Now, this is a daily driver. It's not like it's been sitting out in a field for the past five years. Look at that. See, more messed up is. The pads don't look super low, which means at some point someone put pads on this and just left the rotor like that. This shit is crazy. Uh, wow. Uh -huh. This should be fun. Not really. Alright, I guess uh, they proved me wrong. I'm super surprised. We got the hardware shit down there, as you can see. I've been known to be wrong before. I regret nothing. And here goes the only reason these rear brakes are getting done. Let's go look at the rear pad. There's no more friction material left, so it was just metal on metal on the back side here. You know, so it had nothing to do with any of this and, and that garbage. It's simply because it was starting to make noise that they decided to get the brakes done. That's crazy the rotor off as you can see but it came off with the brake shoes falling out well I guess they don't need a parking brake not too many people use them anyway that's why they kind of just rot away so that's just gonna stay how it is because they don't want to get them done uh, I don't blame them and that's it guys uh, everything went pretty smooth uh, the pads now move freely. I did have to take the caliper bracket off and chuck it in the sandblaster. And I uh, even go at it with the file to get the real heavy chunks of rust off. But it turned out pretty good. Like I said, pads move freely now. So uh, just going to go ahead and knock out the other side. But that will be it for this uh, Sonata. Alright, so unfortunately the left or the right side did not come off as easy as the other side. Uh, I've been at it for over an hour just trying to get the rotor off. You can see I, I've had to pull out all the tricks I had. Uh, this thing was completely seized. It was like locked up. I don't even know how she was driving this thing because all the internals of the, the drum uh, system were just falling apart and everything was just jammed. As you can see, I had to come at it with air hammer. Once I made a hole in it, come at it with air hammer. The shoes were completely locked into the rotor. What a freaking nightmare. Alright, so. Looks like all of this stuff is coming off. I'm all done here, as you can see. What a freaking nightmare. 
took me longer to take one rotor off than it did if I would have done this whole job two or three times. Well, at least it's working now. Brakes are done. Um, it looks like this thing got the AAA service compression fittings on the brake lines. Uh-huh. Alright, well, at least the brakes are done. I'm out test driving this uh, Hyundai Sonata after doing the rear brakes. And uh, surprisingly, it drives pretty smooth for being a piece of crap. <laughs> Uh, but the brakes feel real good there's no noise or anything like that and I did not test drive it before I did the brakes but just looking at the condition of the brakes before I touched them uh, it almost looks as if the rear end wasn't doing anything to stop this car so I would imagine that the owner is gonna feel a massive difference got a Chevy Tahoe here that just got dropped off for front and rear brakes and a front left side inner and outer tie rod uh, the back brakes are just looking old. Uh, the front right side, there's a major lip right there. You could already see it. You could just, I don't even got to touch it. You could just see it. So you can tell that rotor has been on there for quite some time. And on the front left side here, just looking at the rim, you could already see what's going on here. See all the, the brown and shiny particles. So there's absolutely... No more friction material left on the brake pads, so now it's just metal on metal. And owner brought all of his parts. Looks like he ordered everything online, so hopefully we have uh, the correct parts. All right, let's uh, get to it. I'm gonna assume this is a job that uh. The owner himself could not do because these things did not want to come out i had to heat them up like crazy while at the same time being careful of the little rubber boot right here but that thing came out with a ton of smoke behind it that thing was under like tight i mean it, it's not really that it's tight it's just a corrosion but uh let's see how the top one comes out uh maybe i might not have to remove it the side is all done it kind of took forever because things just didn't want to come apart everything's so rusty uh, a lot of torching going on here but cleaned up a good amount of rust pads move freely on uh, the brake hardware right there everything works as it should and uh yeah it sucks because i feel like i spent a lot of time here and it's only one out of the four wheels i have to attack just got off the phone with the owner and he wants to change the inner tie rod here so you know, looking at it, I'm moving all this. I mean, this stuff is solid. It is not moving. If there is any little bit of movement, it's the whole, you know, that whole rod that the inner tie rod is connected to is is moving. And it's not even a lot. It's just, well, I don't got the other side jacked up, so it could be more. But basically, as of right here, me trying to move this, me replacing the inner tie rod is not going to fix anything. You know, so I just called him and talked to him about that. Gave him my thoughts on it. And... He said he doesn't want to get the inner tie rods done because I told him me changing it's not going to make a difference because it seems to be nice and tight. I don't see any play. I don't see a reason to change it. And then he wants to, he asked me about changing all the calipers and I'm like, why? You know, is there a reason? Are you having a problem? And he goes, no, they just, they're just old and I just wanted to tune up on the car. Well, just another one of those things where I haven't checked the other wheels. Obviously, I have to go and check them and do the brakes on them. But as far as I'm seeing, they're just old and rusty, you know, but they still function. Changing new Putting new calipers on the car is not going to make any real difference other than they look prettier. So once I'm done with the brakes, I'll give him my thoughts on if he needs calipers or not. And this is where shooting myself in the foot, right? You could say, oh, well, you're talking customers out of spending money. You know, you're losing money. But I'm not about that, okay? I'm not about taking people's money for the hell of it. We change what needs to be changed and fix what needs to be fixed. You know, if a customer says, oh, I want to change all the calipers just for the sake of it, I'm going to give him my thoughts and tell him they don't need to be changed, but it's your car. Okay, if you want to change them, I'll be more than glad to change them. Simple as that. So now I'm on the front right side. I'm about to get the wheel off and look what I run into. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but that lug nut is 
completely rounded off. There's no corners on it. This sucks. So, uh, let me see what I could do. See if I could get this off. I don't know, guys. I've been heating it up with the with the map gas, and then I even wound this up, and I got it smoking pretty pretty good. Then I put this socket made for extracting uh, things just like this. It's a 22, but I'm hitting on a 21 millimeter. And it's biting hard and you, even using the big Milwaukee gun it won't budge this thing is just it's not spinning or anything it's just it's under so good that not even the gun is doing anything to get it moving so I'm just gonna continue heating it. it's crazy all right so I just heated that thing up like crazy and look at this this thing is not budging wow and I was just about to throw in the towel and just say, you know, call the owner and say, hey, I can't get this wheel off, so I can't finish your brakes. But at the very last second, it came off. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this uh, cool off. Knock that uh, lug nut out and toss it in the trash because it's not going to get used again. So I'm going to really destroy it trying to get this wheel off. I'm still here on the right side of the car and it feels like just to do simple brakes is taking forever. The car is a nightmare. Nothing wants to come apart. Everything has to be torched off. Uh, so I called the owner and I told him, stop at AutoZone. We need a new pin for the caliper. You can see that's pretty much mangled up inside of there. So AutoZone has them in stock as well as the boot that goes right here, torched. So we're going to have to pick up a new, new set of boots. Um, so I went ahead and used my little thread chaser right here that's made for lug nut studs I ran around each and every one clean them up this one specifically right here had no lug nut when the car came in so the threads were just full of rust I got that all cleaned up and now I could actually thread it on by hand so it feels nice and smooth now at this point it's it's the waiting game waiting for the owner to drop off parts now but I'm gonna do what I can and finish putting together whatever whatever I can um, I might go ahead and get started on the rear brakes just it's just I'm just frustrated at this point because I've spent a long time already on this and all I've managed to get done is almost the front brakes it's frustrating I got this stuff put together whatever I could right now I'm trying to compress the pistons on the caliper and it looks like someone overfilled master cylinder they see it getting low so what do they do they add brake fluid right Anyway, the, the brake fluid is now leaking. You see a little stain right there. So I tried to pop the hood open and the latch inside the truck does absolutely nothing. Feels like it's doing nothing. Come out here to the hood and it really isn't doing anything. Just so frustrating. Man, just cars like this. It's just... <laughs> I hate it. Oh, pieces of crap. It's like every little thing fights you. You know, nothing could just go easy. I can't even open the hood to take the, the cap off of the brake fluid reservoir uh, to, you know, to remove some of the fluid. It's just, so I got no choice. I got to compress the piston and, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother trying to open the bleeder here because this, this stuff is ready to snap. You touch on this stuff, it's breaking. It's, it's going to need a whole new caliper. So I'm not going down that road. All right. So I'm just going to continue pushing in the piston and I'll talk to the owner when he gets here about, you know, how to get the hood open. Just got some new parts dropped off. We got the rubber boots, basically just a complete hardware kit. We have new pins and what's nice is they don't use this crappy Torx. They use a regular hex. They use a regular socket to take these off, which is super nice. And we got about five or six new lug nuts. I talked to the owner about uh, the hood. He said he just had open a few days ago. So he was trying to help me. He was pouring the latch while I pulled the hood. And we still could not get it open. So I'm going to see if I could come in through the grill right there in the front. See if I could get the pop. Alright, so we got the new boot in. It had to be pressed in. And the new bolt. So that's all good. If anyone wondering, I did not do the top. Because the boot is still fine. And that, I never had to touch it. Some people are not going to like that. Some people are going to agree with me. Uh, don't fix what ain't broken, right? You could be opening up a can of worms because if I try to remove this and it doesn't want to come off and ends up rounding out, then I'm really opening up a can of worms for something that honestly you don't need to touch. 
you can take this whole caliber apart without ever removing that bolt so why open up that can of worms right uh, point is everything's back together everything's perfect everything moves how it should just gonna go ahead and pop the wheel on it and uh screw it on over to the back brakes easy rotor off of the back of the truck Not as bad as the front, but still pretty old stuff. Here's the pads. So this side's, or at least the rear so far, is coming apart a lot easier than the front side. Um, but one thing I did notice is the slide pins on the bracket are pretty much seized, so now I have to deal with that. And Right there, car in the driveway, we got another Chevy Cruze Turbo, overheating. Checked it real fast, there is absolutely no coolant in the reservoir. So, I guess we'll find out later what's going on with that one. I'm still fighting this slide pin on the caliper bracket. I still got that Chevy Cruze overheating waiting on me out there. And then another one just came in on the hook right now, uh, Malibu. Battery light turned on. She said lost power steering. So I gotta look at it see what's going on But it's stupid thing. I got work stacking up on me and here I am dealing with stupid crap like this <laughs> ah, So let me go ahead and try to get this free. Oh, yeah, she's starting to move you can see the smoke Starting to just pour right out the little boot right there the more I wiggle it Okay, so at this point I just removed the boot because it was just in the way and really, it was no good to begin with. It's the reason why water gets inside of here. Uh, the boot's not doing its job. But what I did here is, okay, so I put the vice grips back on the pin and I put a bolt in it. Uh, it serves two purposes. Number one is so that I don't crush the pin with the vice grips with the real tight clamp that I have on it. And number two, it gives me something to hit. So I can knock the pin down a little bit. Basically, you just want to keep moving the pin in any direction. And that's what's going to break it free from its bond. So I could hit it on top right where I put the bolt. And while I jiggle the vice grips back and forth, I hit the bottom of the vice grips to try to knock the pin out. And so far, it's moving a good amount. So I'm just going to keep working it. And it seems like it's going to come out. And it's out. What a freaking nightmare. That thing fought all the way to the end. Well, the hard part, hard part is done. Just go ahead and uh, clean out the bore, grease up everything, and uh, see if I have a boot like this laying around here somewhere. And I'm starting to lose daylight here. It looks bright out here, but the camera's just deceiving. It's actually, it's starting to get dark here. Um, yeah, so. Based off of what time this truck got here, I have six hours invested in it. And all I've done is both of the front brakes, and I just finished this one. I, granted, I did, you know, take brakes to do little stupid things like look at that car real fast. But for the most part, it's an all-day brake job due to the rust. Freaking sucks. <laughs> this is real life, people. Ooh.